Okay, Ezekiel chapter 9. Yay! But no! We just got talking the next in Ezekiel about what the Catholics call Lent. The death of Tammuz, not Jesus. And I and I was a Catholic, Polish Roman Catholic, and Lent is the time to see is where you give up something for forty days. I forget if Mardi Gras was before I, yeah, Mardi Gras was before you have the biggest Catholic badge of celebration and women lifting up their shirts in Louisiana, New Orleans, and then you go on a fast for forty days. And on, on a time called Ash Wednesday, you go to the priest and they take the ashes, what they say is of the palm leaves of Palm Sunday the week before, and you put them on your forehead. And if you were a good Catholic, you wore those, those ashes all day long. Then Stiley, the Christian, would be finding you in Walmart and say, hey, you got a dirty forehead. Well, they're my, they're my Ash Wednesday. I said, well, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Because when you saw what we did in chapter 8, and you need to go listen to chapter 8, don't, don't violate it like Jeremiah chapter 10. You're in the celebration of Tammuz, which will bring you to Christmas, the birthday of Tammuz. But let's not get off the picture here. And what has happened is we see women in the court of the temple weeping for Tammuz. You didn't find women weeping for the death of Jesus recorded. Now you know they wept, but it wasn't recorded. They were weeping when they came the first day of the week to the tomb of Jesus. And then we find another blasphemy Abomination, Ezekiel records, is the celebration of the sunrise service of worshiping the sun coming up in the east. And you'll even find that in 2021, where churches get together and they go to, to the beach and they have their Baal worship. And you could be even good after the church service, stay, take off your clothes like they did with the golden calf for Aaron and lay half naked, maybe some places fully naked, and get yourself a brown skin by Baal. And then your whole entire body would be marked, hey, I laid out for Baal all day long. Or you can even buy stuff artificially to make it, I was worshiping Baal today, though I wasn't at the beach. Or I can get an artificial bale at these spas and lay underneath a, a heat lamp and get the, the mark of bale. The mark of bale is a tan. And what woman wants, doesn't want tan lines, that they will adjust themselves to make sure they don't have the, the marks of their bikini. That's all the worship of bale. Now, on my skin, you'll find that my arms are tan. I get, tan I get burned and I get tanned. Because I am out not celebrating Baal, but I am getting vitamin D in the service and the ministry of Jesus Christ. And Baal just has to be shiny. But for me, it's not Baal. It's the sun designed and made and created by God. And I enjoy the sunlight while I'm preaching the gospel or holding the sign for Jesus. And my skin gets tampered with the sunlight or the, the tan, or the sunburn that I do get, because I don't wear the lotion. I am not purposely laying out to get these marks. They happen as serving God. And then there, there are marks for people who serve Baal. All right, now you know where we're getting before we open up Ezekiel 9. There are marks for serving God, and there are marks for serving Baal. And all the world and all the Christians, oh, don't receive the mark of the beast, don't receive the mark of the beast, and the vaccine is the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast doesn't have anything to do with the Christian because the mark of the beast 
gets active after the rapture. Now, they could be marking the people right now with the vaccine. But that doesn't do me anything because I'm out of here before the mark. And if, if my skin gets marked or my blood gets marked, when the rapture happens, it's going to be on the sidewalk or on the floor. But today I am saved by the power and blood of Jesus Christ. I am signed and sealed by the Holy Spirit that dwells in me. I'm sealed. I am marked by God to say, hey, you see that one down there? That's mine. I adopted it. You want to see the seal on the official paperwork? When you get adoption from a child, you have a paper with a seal on it. So anything comes up to me about that child, hey, this is the paperwork. You see the seal on the paperwork? It's a certified document of the courts and of the state that that is my child. God has a seal for Christians. It is the seal. It is the mark that the Holy Spirit dwells in me. You got the idea? If I got any identification from Satan from all the rock and roll music I listened to growing up as a kid, listening to the records backwards and everything like that, I lost that seal. On April 21st, 1987, I received the seal of God. I got saved. The Holy Spirit moved in. And I cannot and will not ever lose that seal of God. So we open with Ezekiel 9 and 1. Because this is all what we're going to look at. And we're going to read to 9 4. And we got all kinds of good interest. Pre prepare to open up the dusty pages of the Bible. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice. I want you to get that. Mark that. Oh, that preacher over there, he's so loud. Excuse me, sir. Yes, officer. Uh, you're just too loud. You're going to have to turn off that equipment. Okay, officer. No problem. Click. It's off. It's off, officer. Yes, it's off. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be. Oh, man. <laughs> He's louder than the amplification. We should totally leave the amplification on. Something about a loud voice. But be careful too, be careful too, because there are loud voices of people who are devil-possessed. Loud voice of, the, of that man, the maniac, uh, Gadara, one of his marks of his devil possession was he had a loud voice. I want you to see there is something of God and there is something of devil. And you better realize you better get the right side. Because there is no middle ground. I mentioned a preacher uh, last night that he went and because no one would do it. And for the testimony of Jesus, I did a sunrise service. That sunrise service is Baal and not Jesus. You can't serve God, you can't serve Mammon, and you can't serve Billy Isle. You cannot listen to two sides of a record. That's what we had when I was a child. You had to listen to side A, then you turned it over to side B. Loud voice caused them that have charge over the city, Jerusalem, <clears throat> to draw near. Every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Uh oh. A sword, a spear, an arrow. And behold, six men of all the numbers that God could say, he said six men. Scripture was scripture. From the way of the higher gate, and these are the gates in Jerusalem, which lieth toward the north. That's where Jeremiah, I mean, that's Ezekiel then. That's where the women are weeping for Tamus. That's where the men turn their back on God and worship Baal. Chapter 8. Get chapter 8. Listen chapter 8. Every man with a slaughter weapon in his hand ain't going to get pretty. And one man among them was clothed with a linen. And a writer's ink cord by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. 
that brazen altar is on the east side. You went from the from the from the brazen altar from the veil to the holy of holies. You went from east to west. On the north is men, is women weeping for Tammuz. On the east is the people celebrating the sunrise. Women weeping for Tammuz who has died. <laughs> Good Friday. And the men who are on the east, happy resurrection morning. Easter, here's your Easter eggs. Here's your, go find the eggs, sperm. That's what's going on at the temple of the Jews, by the Jews in Ezekiel. Now remember, Ezekiel was in Babylon and he transported by God pulling his hair. Get the, get the tapes, get the videos. <laughs> Read Ezekiel. God pulled him by his hair. That's a tension getter. Like I said, did it hurt? Alright. And went in verse 2 and stood beside the brazen altar. Ezekiel could do that because he's a priest. Jeremiah could have done that because he was a priest. Jeremiah 1.1, 1, 1, Ezekiel 1.1. 1, 1. They were priests. The glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub. This is all chapter 1 we, we studied. Where he was to the threshold of the house, the temple. And he called to the man with the, with the linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord, that be Jehovah God, said unto him, I don't know what kind of voice God has, but go through the midst of the city, Jerusalem, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abomination we did in chapter 8 that be done in the midst of her. Look at verse 6. Slay utterly old old, young, both maids and little children and women. Right, we'll look at that another night. But I want you to get that too of what we're going to study. Notice God said to the man with the ink horn in the linen in a, in a loud voice go through the, the city of a uh, Jerusalem and any man is oh man I wish they stop I wish they get right I wish they stop the sin and I want you to mark his forehead people during his ego time would be get the mark of Jehovah get the mark of Jehovah you'll be saved get the mark of Jehovah you would be saved because those who did not have the mark will look at Lord willing maybe tomorrow night died. Those who did not get the mark of Jehovah died. Who were those that were not marked? Those who were weeping for Tammuz, the sun god that was born December 25th, conceived on Easter, and died and resurrected on Resurrection Sunday. And then worship the sunrise service. Those are the people who would not be marked and they will die. Those who were marked are those who are trying to live right, who are doing right, and trying to... <laughs> they're at the temple, they're bringing their offerings like they're supposed to, they're doing to the best ability of the law, and God says, okay, mark them. Well, that's a complete reversal today. Don't get the mark. Don't get the mark. And But the mark that's coming up is the Antichrist, Satan, and the devil. So let's go to the book of Revelation. And did you ever realize that Revelation and Ezekiel run together? You knew Jeremiah... Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Revelation, you know Daniel. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, Revelation. 
Well, and you get Christians, oh, I just love the book of Revelation, but I don't read the Old Testament books. <laughs> so, Revelation chapter 14. And we're going to look at verse 9. So as we study these boring Old Testament books, we are also studying the book of Revelation. So when Lord willing, if the Lord tarries, we get to the book of Revelation, we can, hey, were you with us when we did the Old Testament? Well, oh, no. Then you're not going to get the book of Revelation if you don't read the 66 or 6, well, actually, yes, yeah, 66, you got to read Revelation too. You can't get the one book without the 66. They all go together. So Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, we read, And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship, well, with a what? With a what? Can you imagine a lot, and I, I've had lost men that hate the preaching of the gospel. Oh, I'm going to go to heaven. You're not going to enjoy it because if you don't enjoy the loud voice of me preaching the gospel, you're not, I'm in heaven already. The church went to heaven, Revelation 4, right? So when we get to heaven, the Christians are there, and we hear loud voices of the angels speak. Oh, shut them up, we don't want to hear it. No, 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 no. But be careful. Don't go running around saying, well, because he's got a loud voice, he's a Christian, because devils have loud voices. you got to get that measuring tool. You're either too far to the left or too far to the right. But you also can't be in the middle ground. you got to say, hey, listen, am I... All for God or, or for Satan? Or am I walking down the middle of the road? And the latter the scene church age, those that are walking down the middle of the road, lukewarm and says God throws them out. And many of the Christians today, they're saved and they're sealed and they're walking down the middle of the road and God's up in heaven about their living. <laughs> We're having a great service. <laughs> okay, Bill, give me another vomit bag. <laughs> Aren't we just doing a great... Welcome to the Lord's house today. Blah, up in heaven. You gotta be... You can't walk with God in Belial. That's what many of these churches are doing in the Laodicean church age. And the many is disappearing to the few churches. So with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast... And his image, all right, and receive his mark. So there's the beast, there's the image, and there is his mark in his forehead or his hand. Now that image is it's a golden image that's given light more than what Mickey Ratland could do with their imitations and ammonics. Because it's all mechanical, it's all computer. The image is coming to light. And that image is going to speak and rat out. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo. Oh, King, yes. Those three Hebrews over there are not bowing down worship before me. We got Daniel coming back to life. The golden beast. Strike up the band. So, here's the mark of the beast. It's in the forehead and it's in the hand. Okay, verse number 11. And notice how they shall drink the wine of the wrath of God. Okay, those that get the mark. The smoke... Of their torment ascended forever and ever. See, you're not completely annihilated in hell. You're a forever smoke. And they have no rest, day or night, torment, how Luke put it, 
who worship the beast, one, and his image, two, that Shadrach, Meshach, you know, didn't do that. We're back in Daniel. And who receiveth the mark, all right, not only the mark, of his name. That's interesting because you're going to worship the Antichrist. And you can't do the, definitely cannot do the middle ground in the tribulation period. You're either going to worship God and you're going to starve to death. Or you're going to worship the beast and, and be able to do business, either buying or selling. And then you got, after the beast is killed, the image sets up in the honor of the beast who was killed, like you set up Washington Monument and General Lee horses and all the statues and the statue of Mount Rushmore and all that of dead men. America's preparing you to worship the dead beast that comes to life. And the image is set forth and you will worship the beast and you will worship that image and then you will receive a mark of his name. Notice how we are studying Mark in Ezekiel and not the Gospel. Okay? So we have the Mark of the Beast. Okay, we have the Beast. That's the Antichrist. But God had a Mark in Ezekiel 9, didn't He? What is the Mark of the Devil, the Antichrist? God has a Mark. Satan comes up with a Mark. And you know what Satan's mark really is? Is to counterfeit a mark of God. Chapter 13 of Revelation. Everything that God does, Satan has an imitation. God, let's put it like this. God comes up with real good food. Glory to God. Satan comes up with artificial food. What on earth is... I, I, I love that I bought something the other day at the grocery store and it was on the little belt going to the cash and said, no artificial cheese what is artificial cheese no artificial flavoring is there an artificial tree out there yes there is yes there was in the garden it's not real the, the, the salvation of God, the natural, is the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. The artificial means of, if you want to say salvation, of the devil is religion. Included is your Baptist in the name that I came up in the church I was in, your Baptist Catholic or your Catholic Baptist church. That's a Baptist church that practices the Catholic means with a different name. That's how the, listen, I studied the Roman Greek God and how they come to be. Inanna, I-N-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, is a, a, a woman goddess. Now her name is Esther. Now her name is Mary. So, Revelation 13, verse 16 I told you 13, I don't know if I told you 16. We have, and he, this is the beast. Look at verse 15. Had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should speak. Disneyland can't come up with that. Now, it may talk, but it's a recording. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. It makes you talk and smoke and green, green, emerald city, fire and smoke, written by the devil who knows because he was in heaven. Fighting over ruby red slippers. That the image should speak, but verse 16. And he, the beast, and the image, causes all, small, great, rich, and poor. Remember that little verse I, I, we read that I said we'll do next week, Lord Bowen? Right. A verse, you don't go there, but Ezekiel 9 say, 
both old, young, both maids and little children and women. Revelation 13, 16, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, as Ezekiel 9. What was going on in Ezekiel 9? Who was marking who? God was marking the, his people. And those that did not get marked died. All right, here is Satan marking people like God marked people. But Satan's people will ultimately die and go to hell by receiving that mark. You see, Satan will imitate God, but his destruction, no matter what Satan will do, that God does, Satan leads to hell, God leads to life. Satan can never give you life of what he imitates of God. And you'll never find God imitating Satan. And yet the Christian in his church and the Baptist churches are for always trying to do Satan's means to get God's result or product or sum, but they always get a difference. Boy, can't you tell I'm taking algebra in school right now. So he causes a small, great, rich, poor, free, and bond. That's everybody. That's the all. And the small, great, rich, bond, free, and bond will tell you what the all stands for. To receive the mark in their right hand or their forehead. But there's, you know, they say, all is all, and all that means all. You heard that in the church, right? Does everybody receive the mark in the tribulation period? No. There are Jews and there are few Gentiles who do not and will go the way of God. So all doesn't always mean all. But oh, how the, 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 the preachers out of the pulpits love what they heard in school. All means all. I was with a man in California and he was teaching Daniel we got to Daniel, and he said, all means all. And the lions had made a mastery of all the people that, that defiled Daniel. And I wrote that man in California, a well-known preacher. I said, all means all that means all. And it says all their bones. Every single, and I said, what, there, hundred and six, what, how many bones are there in a skeleton? I said, does that include the anvil and the, the hammer and the other Ear bones? Were the, all those bones broken? And you know I never got a response. And then some people, oh, look at the heresies. <laughs> that no man might buy or sell. No man. If you don't receive the mark, you're not the all. And those that do not receive the mark, though no man might buy or sell. So you can't sell nothing if you don't have the mark. You can't, did I say so? You can't buy anything unless you have the mark. You can't sell anything unless you have the mark. I, I preach at a farmer's market. If you're going to be at that farmer's market and have a booth, you're not going to have your $15, although they may charge you. You're going to have a mark. And you're going to go up and say, well, how much are those disgusted tomatoes? We don't have a price no more. What do you mean? Let me see your identification. If you got the identification, you can have the tomatoes. Well, I don't have an identification. Well, you ain't got no identification. We ain't got no tomatoes. You got no shoes and no shirt. We ain't got no service. Sound familiar? If you don't receive that the the, uh, the vaccine, you're, you're not getting no service. You don't have a job. The vaccine may not be the mark of the beast. I don't think it is, but it is preparing you for the mark of the beast. Satan is trying the world out right now. All right, what will they do? What will they not do? Before he fixes the final. Okay, now here's my mark. Now watch. You can't buy, you can't sell, you're not going to defeat the company. I know that there are Christian movies out there, you know, we got the artificial mark. No, you're not. 
You just you just made a movie that sucker a bunch of Christians in. All right. There's no trade without the mark. He that had the mark or the name of the beast. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You always hear say, don't take the mark of the beast, don't take the mark of the beast. There is the mark or, you know what or means, the name of the beast or the number of his name. And so it's not just the mark, you can receive the name of the beast. Or you can receive the number of it. There's the mark, there's the name, or the number. You have a choice. You have a choice to put it on your right hand or your forehead. You want to be a good little Catholic? You put the mark on your forehead and you wear it all day long. Hey, I'm gonna be a I'm gonna have his name across my forehead. I am gonna get a Christian tattoo with the mark on my forehead. I can't think of his name on the man that went to prison he finally died he should have been put to execution he should have been put to death but he lived all those years Charlie Mason here is wisdom you want to know something God's gonna say okay I'm gonna tell you let him that has understanding want to understand. count the number of the beast the number of a beat the number is of a man a man any man from Adam to his number is 603 score and six. The number of man is six. Six in your Bible, remember Ezekiel 9? Six in your Bible means man. I was told and I've seen physical, uh, a Xerox copy of, of Adolf Hitler's ID number, his ID number was 555. Five is the number of death. Guess who's coming up with 666? And it won't be President Biden. Then again, who knows? All right, Revelation 7. Have you got it? All right, let's throw another monkey wrench. 7-1. Are you ready? After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Four is a number of earth. Holding the four winds of the earth. The winds should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor any. Can you imagine this time of the tribulation period? I'm glad I'm in heaven. There's coming a time of the tribulation period. There will be not even a breeze. You know, when I am in the Florida sun with the vitamin D serving God, holding a sign on Dunn Avenue or preaching or being at the farmer's market for the Lord's ministry, and God sends that breeze, I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. That felt good. You know, is it a hot day? Find yourself a highway. Get yourself a chair. Sit on the side of a highway with a sign for Jesus. And you will get air conditioning by all the passing cars. You will love on a hot day that idiot that drives 90 miles per hour flying by. Because that, oh, and you've got to hold on to your sign real good. But it feels good. That's not going to happen at this time of the tribulation. And friend, if you're not going to have a wind that blows on the moon, uh, moon on the earth, the sea, or any tree... I don't think you're going to have air conditioning. I don't think you're going to. Right now, I got two fans blowing on me. I'm hot. I got a dehumidifier. It's humid. I don't think you're going to get that in the tribulation period. I saw another angel sending from the east, having a seal of the living God. Pay attention. And cry with a loud voice again. I know what my calling is. God's give as someone said today at church, God's giving me that, that loud calling. He says, You're loud. I can't keep a secret. My voice is too loud if I repeat it. The four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Saying, Hurt not the earth. That don't mean you gotta get a boo-boo for the earth. That means the trees, the animals, death, but neither the sea nor the tree. Till 
we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. There is coming a time Ezekiel 9 is going to happen again. God is sealing people of his. We'll read the next few verses. In Revelation 7. In Revelation 13, 14, the devil's sealing his people. You got a, a real mark of God. And you got an artificial mark of Satan. Satan, oh, no, we did that. And I heard the number of them that which were sealed. They were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. There are going to be Israel, Hebrew, Jewish, 144,000 males who have not had any relations with any women. And they're going to walk this earth witnessing to their fellow Jews. And on their forehead, the only way they're going to know is going to say Jehovah. And they're not the idiots that come to your door because we're not in the tribulation period. And some of them are African, not Jewish. Some of them have children with them who they produce the children. You can't be a human and produce a child by not having sex because there was only one Mary. These are the true, not today, these are the true Jehovah 144 Jewish witnesses and they have a mark on their forehead, verse 3. Where was one of the places that, that Satan came up with his mark that we read in verse four, in chapter 14? On the forehead. Satan's going to counterfeit God's mark. But there is a difference. Do you really think that, let's take number 836. 144,000 Israeli witness of Jehovah. You think if he goes in the marketplace, you think his identification is going to go through with the Satan's identification? Now you want me to say no. That's a very good question. And the answer lies that I don't have the answer. How well does Satan counterfeit Jehovah's mark? But there's only 144,000 that get God's mark. That's it. And I would assume, I assume that there's a limited amount set by God in Ezekiel 9 that are marked. And they're all Jewish because they're at the temple. And they're in Jerusalem. Well, Ezekiel is a boring book. I don't like to read it. How come we're how come how come in Ezekiel we are looking at the mark of the beast? All right, all these people that talk about the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast. Have you mentioned? Have they ever said the mark of Jehovah? So, if you don't want to be rude and crude to your Jehovah Witness friend, just show me one thing and I'll be happy. Sure. You lift up your hair and show me the mark. I don't have a mark. Let me see your right hand. Run them over to Revelation 7, 144,000 a mark. And then they'll say, well, you know, we're 236,000. We're a million. God didn't say a million, did he? He said 144,000. There's not 144,001. That's the problem with the Jehovah Witnesses. And then just ask him, are, are you Jewish and virgin? That's another. You, you can read that in the else. We're not looking at that right now. But there's that. There's God's mark. And we got to say, number, on the scale of 1 to 10, 1 is God's mark. 10 is Satan's mark. There is no 5. 
I don't see a five in the devil. I mean, the Bible. Five is death. Okay? So, chapter nine. Revelation chapter nine. Verse four. You ready? It was commanded they should not hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing. <laughs> There's a tree hugging, or any tree. These are the locusts. These are some weird locusts. They are given orders by God. You know animals listen to God more than man does? So they can't hurt any tree. Can you imagine a locust not hurting grass? He loves a grass salad. But, 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 Ezekiel chapter, no, don't go to Ezekiel now, but Ezekiel chapter 9, ready? But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. We're going to pick up the Lord Terry's Ezekiel 9. There are going to be people marked in Jerusalem. And if they have the mark, you leave them alone. Revelation 9, these, these locusts. All right, go out, do your business. But if they have the mark of the seal of God, I don't have a mark of the seal of God in my forehead. I've got the Holy Spirit in my heart. Now, here's the other question. Is right. Well, what about those that have the mark of the beast? The mark of the beast doesn't show up to chapter 14. It looks like people get so to the point, eh, well, they got a mark and we're protecting and the devil's got to work in his little, his little, you know, basement, you know, ego, ha, 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 scientist. We got to come up with something. If you don't want that holy God torture you anymore and receive my mark is nothing but the mark of God. Deception. You want to be protected? Take my mark. You can't get God's mark, but you can get my mark. Quite interesting, isn't it? On the foreheads, where do the Catholics mark their Ash Wednesday people? Do they mark them on the buttocks? No. Do they mark them on the right hand? No. How about where they put the crucifix between their boobies? No. Right smack where God marks his people. Right smack where the Antichrist marks his people. Of all the places. Isn't that interesting? And the Catholics don't want you in the Bible. I wonder why. Well, we're not done. So go back to chapter 14 real quick. Verse 1. So he said foreheads. Chapter 14, verse 1. And lo, I, I looked, and lo, the Lamb, capital L, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, stood on Mount Zion with him 144,000, having their Father's name written on their forehead. When you see the Jewish 144,000, you walk up to them. In Hebrew, you're going to see Jehovah, Yahweh, or I am. I don't know which one's going to be. I hope. In the tribulation period, you don't read Greek because you're going to have to read Hebrew. Where was the mark of the beast? Ask yourself. Where will a dedicated beast honoring with all allegiance to the beast, where would he proudly wear his mark? Put it right here, sir. Right where the third eye is. You know where the Indian women put their banan, banai? I don't know how to say it. That little, you ever see the, the, the Indian women, that little red mark? Why do Indian women have that little red that mark of all their gods? They're not the 144,000. They're Indian. It's an artificial mark of Satan. Well, again, why didn't they put it in their buttocks? Why don't they put it in their boobies? 
I mean, come on. Look at all the places that American women put their piercings. I don't even want to tell you where some of the places they put those piercings. But none of those piercings are in the forehead. I have been frightened by a cashier or somebody doing me service and they got it stuck in your tongue and your lip and in their nose. But they don't have that crap on their forehead. Because it's going to be a mark, it's not going to be a doodad. Charlie Mason had the mark. Not the devil's mark. Not God's mark, but his own mark. Friend, there are two marks coming. There's the mark of 144,000 on their forehead with the Father's name. And then there's the mark of the beast, the name of the beast, or the number of the beast. No one over the 144,000 is going to get the mark of God. So, chapter 22. Revelation 22, verse 4. Verse 1, And he showed me a pure river of water of light, clear as crystal. For see now the throne of God and the Lamb of God. And the Lamb. And the Lamb. Every time I see Lamb, I want to say Lamb of God. That's what I preach. You don't be preaching the Lamb in heaven. That takes away the sin. The sin is gone. In the midst of the street on either side of the river was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner fruits, yielding her fruit every month. The leaves of the trees were the healing of the nations, not Christians. I've done this battle and lost the battle with my grandpa. We separated ourselves because some idiot taught him that he needed that tree of life and the fruit and the leaves to be healed. We don't have any, we'll not need any more healing when we get to heaven. The nations. I'm not a nation no more. I'm a Christian. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Remember the servants that got the mark of God, Jehovah? They shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Now, I'm going to leave a question here. Because this is the end of all the ends that has no ends. And there shall be no night there. There will be people in heaven that have Jehovah or the Lamb Jesus name on their foreheads. It marks. I don't know if that's Christians too. But I sure know a lot of Christians today that go out and get a tattoo. And when you ask them about their salvation, they will roll up their sleeve and show you a cross. Yeah, what's that tell? Oh, the old man Christian. Well, maybe uh, there are people in heaven that are going to have God's name on their. Part. I don't know if it's Christians either. I can't say yes, and I can't say no. But the devil comes up with the imitation. So when we go back to Ezekiel chapter 9, Ezekiel chapter 9, we'll, a preview of what we're going to get back in this chapter. Please don't look at this like, oh, 
I don't understand what's going on. Because now we got to put Ezekiel with Revelation. And what we know, Ezekiel 9.1, he cried in my ears with a loud voice. You understand that now? <coughs> <coughs> Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Well, the 144,000 are not going out with a destroying weapon. So they're not the same. The 144,000 are going out with a word. Satan's going out with a weapon to destroy those that don't have the mark. You see the switch over? And behold, six men came the way to higher gate, which lieth toward the north, every man slaughtered weapon in his hand. And one among them was clothed with linen. Okay. Revelation. Oh, come on, we just left that. Revelation chapter oh boy. Is that ten or nineteen? Oh, my bad writing. All right, Revelation nineteen nine. Eight. Revelation nineteen eight. I write terrible. And to her was granted that she should be reigned in fine fine linen, clean and white, for linen for fine linen is the righteousness of saints. That's the church. Okay, verse fourteen. Verse fourteen. The armies which were in heaven followed them upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's the church. That's me. At the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's me coming back in a fine, clean linen. You don't put white on me today. When If you were to put me in white and I step outside, all the dirt in the world is going to I could step out Daytona Beach in white and dirt from, from Russia will be coming up. It will be this mass exodus of dirt all over the world. Not here. Now, 15.6. Revelation 15.6. You didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? 15.6. And seven angels came out of the temple, having their seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen, not fine linen. Well, what are we going to wear in heaven? Are you a Christian? Yes. You're going to wear fine linen. Are you an angel, an Old Testament saint? Yeah, you're going to wear white linen. Pure. There is a difference. So back to back to Ezekiel. I almost forgot the book we're in. Ezekiel chapter 9. Now I'm going to shoot down something. Ready? Verse 2. I'm going to shoot down. I'm going to be an ace. And I'm going to shoot the Red Baron down. Are you ready? Six men came from the... We're in the Old Testament, right? Six men came from the higher gate, which looked toward the north. Every man with a sword weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed in with linen. Is that fine linen? Who wore the fine linen in Revelation? The Christians. I heard a preacher say, well, there are Christians in the Old Testament. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He's clothed in linen like the angels in the Old Testament. Thanks. That's not pure linen. With a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. They are in the courtyard of the temple. And there are men looking toward the east, remember? Worshipping Baal. And there are women crying for Tamu. And the glory of the God of Israel, Jewish, Hebrew, was going up from the cherub, where he was, to the threshold of the house, and he called the man with the linen. Not a Christian. 
which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through Mrs. City, through the midst of Jerusalem, set a mark on the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that done in the midst. What do you think that, that, that mark now is upon their foreheads? Scripture with Scripture. Can anybody kill the 144,000? Not until God's ready to kill them because they're protected. And we're going to stop right there.